All right, what's going on, guys? Sorry for those noisy heaters. It's got to be comfortable in here at all times. <laughs> but we've got a video today. We're doing the opposite of what we did in the last video. We are doing the 10 things that I love about this RX-7. So there were definitely things that I don't like about it or that just suck about the car. But it is a really great car. And for what it is, it is a blast to drive. It's, like I said in the last video, this is probably my favorite car out of everything that I've got. So let's break down and just get into this car and we'll go over the things that I love about this car. So jumping right into it, we've got number one. And basically you're looking right at it. This engine was originally built for this car, but this car ended up getting a bunch of other stuff. So this thing got set on a tire for years and got pushed in the corner. And then I basically bought this car around that engine. Just kind of breaking it down real quick. This engine was pretty built up. It had a, a mild cam and it had these trick flow heads, the dual plane intake, uh, a Holley 600 and flat tops with valve reliefs. So it made, it was, you know, it was like a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. And it was great. I ended up messing up some oil cooler lines and took out a bunch of the bearings. Fast forward till now and what we're looking at, uh, it's got an upgraded cam in it over what was in there before. What was in there before was just good for basically power between you know, probably a thousand and 4,500 RPM. Whereas this thing doesn't start making efficient. It's not even in its efficiency range until uh, like 2,200 and it rips all the way to 65. It's a blast. These cylinder heads are awesome. The intake is great. The power honestly is amazing. So for, I'd say realistically that I think that it makes probably 400 horsepower and inside this car that when we weighed it was 2520. It's definitely lighter now. This it's fast for for what it is and I love how it sounds. You know, that's why I was so focused on talking about the camshaft is I love the way it sounds. It's the greatest thing ever. So, let's move on to the second thing I love about this RX7. So for number 2, we have wheels and fitment. So I come as a kid who was always interested in lower cars. I thought lower cars were cool and the back fitment's kind of weak right now, but I always liked stance cars. I'll give you a little sneak peek here of this. It's my bagged Model 3. I just love cars that look cool and are slammed. I mean, really, it's basically it. I don't want that ridiculous, crazy camber, anything that makes the car look stupid, which looks are subjective, but I don't know. I'm into this. I think that this looks great as this is like race car fitment. All of the alignment is set up for drifting. So as you see the car set up now, you can see it does have camber in the front for sure. But that camber's there for a reason. And I don't know. I think it just looks good. Definitely into the wheels and the tires and the fitment for sure. And now we're here at the third thing I love about the ARC-7, which is the paint and the livery. So I always wanted a car to either be wrapped or painted with the Falcon livery, Falcon tire livery. Funny enough, I actually think that these rear tires are Falcons. So <laughs> it is cool. I love the mixture between the green and the blue or the light blue and the dark blue. 
these colors aren't exact to the Falcon livery, but, you know, the only way to know is if you had two cars side by side. Now, all the spacing and stuff that you see between the colors was done by me, so it's it was definitely an interesting and fun thing to do and learn. You know, I had to make a line so that the... It was straight right there, if you know what I'm saying. You know, this right here, it's nice and straight. And then all these are straight. So it was definitely interesting. It's not perfect, but I do I do love it for sure. It's different. You're not going to see a ton of cars with this type of paint job or livery. And it is spray painted. So if anything happens, you can just mask it off and puff can it and move on, you know? So here we are with the fourth thing I love about the R this RX-7 in particular. This is a wiperless hatch. So this hatch never had wipers. This is the hatch that you would find on a base model S4 RX-7, which is what this car is. So as you can see, we've got the black trim all around the car. That's a base model S4 thing or S4 period base model s4 mirrors i just love those versus like turbo model mirrors so the base model mirrors the black trim and the front bumpers i love the s4 bumpers and basically body all together so the front bumper i love more than the s5 and when it comes to the rear bumper i also like it more than the S5 bumper. So overall, I would say that basically just the S4 package. I like S4 cars more. I like the black. I feel like it breaks the car up. It just makes it interesting to look at. So that would be the fourth thing that I love. And here we are with number five. So the fifth thing I love about this RX-7 would be the wiring. As you can see, it's all neatly routed. And we have this very interesting relay board. Everything is passed through, so your power and grounds pass through the back of the board. Your powers come to the fuse panel and your grounds come out through the board there. It's kind of hard to see. And then you can see that these wires are nicely put together and tied up. And I do have extra cable so the reason that this board is built like this is because it's designed to be transferred in and out of this car along with all the wiring i guess we can kind of drop the bomb here the i have another rx7 an s i have another s4 rx7 car i have a complete car just without engine and that car is eventually going to be this one. So this car will get dismantled completely down to a bare shell. Everything from this one will move over to that other car. So all the wiring in this car has to be designed in a way in which it can be pulled out and then just put in to another car. I would definitely say that that is on my list of things that I really love about it. Just because it took so much time and I think the board come out really nice, as well as all the wiring under the dash. It just is super nice, so that's definitely on the list. And here we are with number six. So this one is kind of generic. Thinking of things that I love and hate about this car was pretty difficult, but it's the styling. So this car is an 87. And I love the 80s vibes. So you've got the flip up headlights. It's kind of boxy. It's not like super squared, but it's not like really rounded like modern cars. You know, this thing is a big bubble, whereas this thing's kind of like brick type, you know. I just love the flash to passes. It's just like a, it's just a vibe. You know, I hate to like say that, but it is, it's really cool. And it just fits that. 80s styling that 
that I love. And you got these big tail lights. I don't know. I think the, just the overall styling of the car is cool. Initially, when I saw these, or when I thought of RX-7, I always was like, I always just thought of FD. But the FC RX-7s are really cool, and I think they're definitely slept on. And they're actually starting to come around. And the value of these things are getting pretty crazy and out of hand. So it was definitely cool to get my two cars when I could. But I definitely love the styling. All right, so number seven about what I love about this RX-7 would be that it is super grippy while drifting. It was something I didn't like when I was first drive, learning to drive, but this car, as you can see right now, is on a 205. And I haven't been in a ton of drift cars, but I've been in pretty fast cars before. And this is super fast. So when it comes to like being in drift, you'd think with a 205 that it would be, it like kind of slide around, it would, wouldn't be super fast, but the car has a bunch of grip. It's got a ton of forward bite, even with the toe in the rear at zero, it still is just ripping forward. So it was kind of interesting to learn drifting on this car just because I wasn't I wanted it to be slower and kind of like you're on snow and on a cloud. It didn't end up being that way, but I think that that partially made me a little bit more of a better driver just because I can handle what happens when the car is coming out of control or whatever at a fast pace, you know? And I feel like if I just had a slow car the whole time that I was driving, I wouldn't have actually gripped the car up. I felt like I would have just left the car, you know, kind of just slippery and would have just enjoyed it that way. But having a car that's fast is definitely, definitely fun. And here we are with the eighth thing I love about this RX-7. As base models come, they only have four lug wheel hubs. And I converted this with five lug S4 front steering components. And we also have turbo model four piston front brakes, which are awesome. Being able to have five lug, five by 114 bolt pattern, it's just super nice. If you're with this car at the track or wanting to test wheels with friends or whatever, you're way more likely to be at a compatible bolt pattern as I feel most cars are five by 114. And just the rebuilt four piston front brakes and the rear brakes are just amazing. That's definitely the next thing that I love about the RX-7 is the five lug and the big brakes. So here we are with number nine. We're back in the engine bay. And as you can see, we plated the frame rail of the car, if you want to call it that, and welded that tube on there. So we have solid engine mounts. We don't only have solid engine mounts, we have solid engine mounts, solid transmission mounts, and solid exhaust. The rear end is also, it's like, a, it's not completely solid like metal, but it's a very hard poly. Everything in this car is very firm. It does not move. If you're hitting a bump, you don't have to worry about the exhaust jumping around. Everything is where it's supposed to be, and it stays that way. Now, most people would think that having an entire car's drivetrain solid would make it very annoying to drive or just a pain because it would be very loud. Funny enough, it's not actually that loud. I've been in cars with very firm engine mounts, and I don't think that this compares. I think that this is very on the mild end. You can definitely feel it. I mean, it's solid mounted, but it's pretty great. And you know if this thing ever moves that you've got a pretty big issue. I definitely enjoy having everything solid mounted. It just makes the car feel really raw. And the 10th thing that I love about this RX-7 is BC racing coilovers. As you can see here, we have drift knuckles, modified factory FC RX-7 
hubs and like you know the basically knuckles yeah those are modified and i have everything pbm or parts shop max parts by max that they make for the rear end of this car so we have the lateral tow rods we have the subframe camber arm we have the camber links and then over here which isn't installed we have the anti they're like uh, toe steer eliminators I was told by a buddy that has an RX-7 to make sure that I get those as it'll help with the car in the rear feeling more solid. I drove the car without anything PBM in it and I thought that it was pretty great, but they have a really big camber issue with factory links once you lower them. Whereas right now, there's a little bit of camber still, but it's miles better than it was before. Just having all that PBM stuff and the knuckles, it's just, it makes driving the car so much more fun, so much more enjoyable because I can basically set the car up however I want and I can change it to feel however I want. Basically just having all the suspension doodads is my 10th and favorite thing about this car. So there we are. There's the 10 things I love about this RX-7. As I said before, it's an amazing car. It's got its flaws, but a lot of it is really good. And as this car is eventually going to get its chassis replaced with a different one, everything that's in this car is really nice and well taken care of. It's really hard to beat. It makes plenty of power. It's got a bunch of grip, even on small tires. It's just, it's kind of hard to beat and just I don't know, if you walk around and look at it, I think that it's a pretty cool car, especially to just see out and about. We're even at an event. Events near us don't have cars that look like, well, they don't have a ton of cars that look like this. There is cars with liveries, but for an entry level driver or you know intermediate, as I'd say that I am, it's cool to be able to have a car like this because usually you don't see really crazy or cool looking cars until you have people that have been doing this for years and years and years. That's why I like having a spray painted car, really, because you can just change it up, which we also will be doing. There's another little leak of what's going on. We're going to be changing the livery and paint on the Sark 7. So there's a little sneak peek of what's to come. But for now, thank you guys for stopping in and watching and hanging out. If you haven't seen the 10 things I hate about the Sark 7, go watch the previous video. There's definitely stuff to learn if you're interested in the car. It kind of tells you a lot about the car itself, too, just as this video did with the good things about it. All right.